and almost immediately we've got our first find. Roman. Our first piece of Samian. While Phil works his way through the plough soil, our resident historian has been casting his somewhat sceptical eyes over our geophys. Well, I don't think it's a temple, oh. because a Romano-Celtic temple wouldn't normally turn up here, that, which is that kind of shape. I think it's much more likely to be a mausoleum. Why do you say that? Well, it reminds me of a mausoleum just outside Rome on the Appian Way, which consists of an enclosure wall and then with a central tomb in the middle. So what's the difference between a temple and a mausoleum? A mausoleum is a place that's dedicated to the memory of a deceased person. You might actually worship there religiously. You know, you'd go and perhaps um, offer sacrifices to the spirits of your departed. But I'd guess, I'd guess, that that's more likely to turn out to be the mausoleum of maybe a commanding officer of this fort. Well, finding the last resting place of a Roman commander doesn't happen every day. And I have to admit, the geophysics results are some of the most striking we've ever seen on Time Team. So, with a strong sense of anticipation, we open our third trench over what looks like one of the walls of our possible mausoleum. That's almost exactly the line of the wall where that sheep track is. We'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not know said almost exactly. Ah, almost exactly. Yeah. Well, you've never known a sheep walk in a straight line. No. <laughs> a bit like yourself, isn't it, yeah, after the beer? Yeah, after a few beers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put this rather long trench in here because earlier today, John did some geophys here and he came up with two things which look suspiciously like ditches. Naomi, can I come in your trench? Of course you can. Yeah. This is the edge of one of our ditches. This is the ditch fill. OK, and if we come this way, yeah. where this light patch is, this is our other edge, so it's quite a wide ditch. That is a heck of a big ditch, isn't it? Yeah. What's that there? Well, here is just something we're just uncovering. It looks like a nice piece of mortaria. Which is? Which is kind of like a, a pestle and mortar for grinding food. And this stuff here? Again, just another nice, chunky vessel. Both Roman? There. It's definitely looking that way. So does that mean that we can date this ditch as Roman? I should say so, yeah. I've built up the basic topography of the landscape as it is now. And on top of it, I've dropped up what would have been the fort. And the first thing you'll notice is half the fort's hanging <laughs> off the landscape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is a very good reason for that, because this side of the fort has actually slipped away. There's been a big landslip on this side here by the river, and it literally has, has gone. So it looks rather nice, but you're going to have to lose that, that side of it. Okay. But what that illustrates really well is this high ground that the fort sits on because it actually sits on effectively a raised island doesn't it the river on one side the valley down here that's a really dramatic piece of topography for dominating this major crossing of the river here very distinctive so we extend trench two into the area we hope an early fort and continue to excavate our possible mausoleum trench we've now uncovered this fantastic wall and we need to work out how it relates to our potential cremation earth. So that's cleaning up really nicely now, isn't it? Without... That should be the inner face, according to the geophys, of whatever we've got here. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> With not one, but two discoveries of potentially national significance, our hunt for the Vicus takes a back seat. With only Matt left scraping away in search of the substantial stone buildings recorded in the 19th century. Matt, we've got a mausoleum down there, we've got cremation burials, we've got a brand new Roman fort that no one's ever seen before. What have you got in your trip? Well, apart from all this stone rubble, we've got hope. And we've got a day and a half as well, so we'll see how it goes. Hello, my name's John Gator. Time Team is fan funded by Patreon. This vital support helps us to make new episodes. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews 3D models and masterclasses, plus lots more.